So today I'm going to try to install a Balmar smart regulator for my Vileo alternator. And for that I need all this stuff here. This is the new back cover. This is the new regulator. This is the new brush cover. Of course the wiring harness. The alternator temperature sensor. The brand new 618 charged controller. A handful of tools. A couple of sockets. Some nut drivers. A screwdriver. Some wiring tools. A voltmeter to check things. And the process boils down into removing the alternator, which involves removing the front cover, the belt, the zip ties, its wiring harness back here, removing this cover right here from the alternator, taking the regulator out from inside of it, putting the new regulator in, putting it all back together. There's a threaded hole on the bottom of here for the temperature sensor. And so once I get that all done, that's my battery control switch, so I make everything safe by shutting off my battery. Uh, I get this reinstalled, get, get the cover back on, and this will connect from the charge post through the conduit over the other side of the boat to send all of the amperage from my alternators directly to my house batteries. And since these are 125 amp alternators, I can set it into a conservative mode to preserve the alternator and preserve the belt. And it'll send about 100 amps to my alternators, even at low RPMs on my engine. I know I looked around, I didn't find anything about this. So I will try to post this video with uh, tags to help people find it. But it's not all that complex, it's pretty straightforward, and it does involve a little bit of rewiring. So hopefully I get enough of that on video to show everybody that it is simple, but it does take some definite steps. This has these two screws that are eight millimeter. And that back cover comes off. And inside we see the original regulator and the new regulator we're going to install. So I take those two screws out. And one of the things you might notice, this regulator has two screws on it over here, whereas this the original one only has one. The second one is for the tachometer lead, I believe, but this alternator has its own tachometer lead. So we're gonna keep using this tachometer lead over here, which doesn't get changed out. This is the charging post, and this is the regulator, and these are the brushes. So, take out my three screws, because I need to reuse those. And I'll carefully lift this up. Here the brushes click, brushes are in there, 
And you'll notice this is a ground contact point and these are electrical contact points that are on the inside. Makes this upgrade really easy. So we take the new regulator. The brushes are here underneath this cover. So this goes over top of the armature. Goes down like this. Gets these same three screws back in the holes. These are electrical contacts underneath, so we'll make sure we get them in there all the way. So now we take this cover off. That snaps the brushes down right there, so they're touching the armature. Um, old one right here. Give me my screws back. So old part, old part. So now we take the new dust cover the open side locks into these little grooves over here, and there, it's installed. So then the new cover, because it's got a different shape openings, goes on. See, this is labeled so the outside post is field, the inside post is tack. The battery sense wire goes through the hole, and we line this up with the original mounting holes. And the, the W post, the tachometer, should still be accessible. And then we take, in our parts bag, there's a screw. And our temperature sensor. has a washer and if we look at the bottom we see right over here this is on the bottom of the alternator there is a screw hole so we line that up with that screw hole we add the screw get my screwdriver that wire sucked up tight against the body like that. Uh, it should not vibrate out and it's got seized uh, locking stuff on it already. So now that the alternator is upgraded, it has the new regulator in it, has the new cover on it, and has the temperature sensor on it. Then all we got to do is reinstall it. The hard part about reinstalling on my engines is that that serpentine belt is really new and so I can't mount the engine before I install it. The wiring harness from the Balmar has a field wire, which goes there with one of the nuts that originally came off of it. My original tachometer wire goes here and stays on this post with the other nut that goes on it. This post isn't used because we have this. And then the new battery cables that I'm gonna make to connect to the house batteries goes on this post here. This hooks up to the 618 regulator. These bottom two posts are for the temperature sensor. So on here I look in post five, post six. Post five is alternator temperature negative, that's the black wire. Post six is alternator temperature positive. So when I get this in place, these two wires go there. This wire that's covered is for a one amp 12 volt power lead. The two green ones are for the remote panel. The white one, which would go on 12, is the tack wire, so we're not gonna use that one. I can plug it in, but I don't need to. 
these four on the wiring harness are already pre-wired so they go on like this then I undo this and on the other end ground battery post so that goes on the battery post white is unused I'll feed it back in and blue is field so blue goes on the field post brown is ignition so on the original wiring harness I take the blue wire cut it off and crimp it here to the brown wire because that's my ignition lead and then on my original wiring harness I have my orange lead which is my tachometer lead so wiring it back up is rather simple for this load I got 100 amps coming in on each side and so from here to my battery bus in the back I decided to run 2 aught wire big fat battery cable so that it can carry that whole 100 amps without very much loss of load from that bus bar to my actual batteries I ran 4 aught so that I could transfer 200 amps the length of the boat up to the house batteries Whenever you're doing DC wiring, always make sure that you look up a DC wiring chart and use the appropriate sized wires. Okay, this is the normal battery charge cable. Try to show you where it was. It goes from the alternator. Of course, the alternator mounts right here. It's connected to that wiring harness that goes back that way. And then down here on the starter, that post on the starter, take the cover off, take the battery cable off, take the nut off, then unscrew the uh, nut bolt combo to get down to the bottom to take the cable off with that red, the inner red cable, that red cable right there is where the battery cable is connected. So the piece in between is kind of a barrel nut with a, with a bolt on it. But you got to take that all apart. It's really hard. It's hard to reach and it's a little narrow space. So All right So what I had to do down here I have an orange and a blue wire That come out of my Yanmar wiring harness The orange wire is the tack which I used the original tack lead on the Vallejo alternator The blue wire is the ignition wire so the ignition hot wire goes to this crimp connector, which goes to the brown wire in the Balmar wiring harness. So that tells the Balmar to turn on and start everything going. The blue wire from the Balmar goes to the field post here. The black wire goes to a ground over here. I used a mounting bolt. And the red wire goes to battery hot right here, which I'm going to hook to the batteries as soon as I make new battery cables. And so that'll be a battery hot. That's hot for the Balmar controller. Tachometer not used. Uh, battery sense wire not used. And tack wire not used. So original tack, original tack post. Ignition hot. Field. Battery hot. And ground. Missed the ground. There it is. Ground. That is the whole thing. That is how you wire this in. The wiring diagram is okay. Seeing it, I think, is better. So, I hope I'm helpful. Wow, i got really weird light on my face. <laughs> Alright, there we go. But, I'm done for the night. I'm going to clean up my tools, go to dinner. Hey guys, thank you for watching. I hope I'm helpful. Aha, could you leave it like that? Okay, so here we are booting up, and it'll go through its self-diagnostic. Thirteen point seven. That's my house battery voltage. Now I take the magnetic and touch this red dot, and just hold it there. See, it says the programming, and then it'll go through battery type. UFP, CDC, goes through this long list. Those are gel batteries, uh, 
AGL batteries. I don't remember what OPS is. I have the list of them. FSB. Halogen. Hal I think it's halide. LFP. That's lithium. And then it will go through this three more times and then shut itself off. There are other steps to use the little magnet for, but that's how easy it is to program these 618s. So after a few minutes, that'll come on, everything will work, and uh, that's the last step. See now it shows me three dots and then it starts going through the whole setup again. So that, that the, the three dots will be the last thing I see, then I'll know it's done, then I'll shut everything off. And in the meantime, that tells me that it's got power, it's connected, it read the battery voltage. I've got all the wires hooked up, I put in new battery cables, and all I need now is to add a new shutoff switch. And on the other side of the boat, I'm gonna do the same thing. So that way I'll have, I can shut off the power to the engine and the power to the alternator because these are going to be separate power sources. As soon as I get done programming, I'll test start and make sure the alternator is putting out and then we're good to go. Anyways, I do thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Take care. And until next time, I'm signing out. Bye.